Hey everyone, we're back with another AI conversation and we're joined today by uh, Professor Cheryl Soriano, DLSU. Uh, we're actually in the same circles. We, you know, uh, we know a lot of common people and actually, um, uh, well, I'll let Prof. Cheryl talk about her work now, but I came by her work, obviously uh, triggered by all this discussion about the recent Washington Post article on digital freelancing and remote tasks. But we'll get to that in a bit. No? So maybe, hi, Prof. Welcome to AI Conversations. And uh, maybe a little bit of background on you no, for everyone. I'm sure a lot of people know you already. Hello. Um, good day. Good morning. Good evening um, to our listeners. And the thanks for inviting me, Doc. Um, so I am Cheryl Soriana. I'm a professor at the Department of Communication at De La Salle University in Manila. And I am currently principal investigator as well of Fair Work in the Philippines. It's mm -hmm. part of a global network of researchers studying the platform economy and the conditions of work within the platform economy. I've been doing research um, in this uh, theme um, for, for probably now for eight years. Wow. Okay. So this, in a way, it's good to know that this theme predates you know, AI, chat, GPT, the recent craze. Now, obviously, those two are going together. So let's jump off from something everyone has been, uh, people have been talking about, uh, this Washington Post article. And then you mentioned Fair Work. Uh, I believe this is the Oxford uh, Internet Institute's, uh, I don't know, uh, work. So can you tell t tell us more about kind of this more most recent news and then let's work our way back to your main thread. You know, what and what are your thoughts about the article that Regine put out and uh, this phenomena that has been recently unearthed, these digital or data annotators. Okay. So I, I think in broad terms, the issues that are raised by the article um, uh, affirms um, some of the key findings as well of Fair Work's cloud work research. So the cloud work research of Fair Work is um, a more global initiative to study how different platforms um, catering to different pla um, platform-mediated work um, that's not geographically tethered. So, sorry, paano ko paliwanag na mas simple? So, iba dalawang kinds siya ng platform mm -hmm. labor. One is geographically tethered, that's your ANCAS, Grab, etc. Meaning, it, the platform matches um, a worker and a client both located in the same area. Yep. And then yung cloud work is where you have workers being matched by a platform to a client which who can be based anywhere in the world. Somewhere and that's world. why it's called cloud, right? So, mm -hmm. so because the work is performed on the cloud. Um, and so dito nagpo yung research nila regime. And the cloud work research affair work that we really that was released 2023 and also to 2022. Scale, a, scale was also covered in that research, but in broad terms, mm -hmm. narisa talaga yung issue ng unfair pay, unfair conditions, unfair contracts, unfair management, and unfair representation. And if you go through that article, kind of just affirms that, but it illustrates more specific, specific cases or examples of how what we mean exactly when we say unfair pay. So meaning, uh, nagtrabaho na, hindi na babayaran, delayed yung payment, etc. Um, or, or for example, they're, they're competing too much and that's why they're forced to accept very low rates or they find themselves um, wanting to still try and aspire to get work there continually, even if they already know that they've had bad experiences with clients on the platform. So, something like that. So mm -hmm. it kind of affirms those problems. But, kind of more, but if we think about it in a more systematic way, we could assess the experience of workers in scale or the experience of workers performing work to train or label AI um, um, across, bakit problematic yung trabaho na yan? We can more systematically say na problematic siya. When we say because fair is unfair. Mm -hmm. The pay is unfair because the condition is unfair. Because the contract is unfair, because the management system, no wala kang mechanism for redress, hindi ka nabayaran, hindi ka pwede magreklamo, that's unfair management. And the last one is, you cannot actually organize. You're, 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 you're discouraged from organizing, so that's unfair representation. So yung fair work, nag, parang nagbibigay lang siya ng parang framework <laughs> or schema mm -hmm. as, to, to help us um, kind of analyze this. Pero this, this, this article gives us very specific illustrations of that. Yeah. So I think the immediate impact to me is obviously 
this is not isolated to scale or remote tasks or even annotation itself. So maybe I'd want to zoom out a bit. And and this is obviously the, the stuff you've been working on for eight years. What is it about these kinds of, I would say, new jobs, right? These are new new platform-based jobs, geog even geographically based platform jobs. What What is it about the nature of this work that seems to gravitate towards uh, you know, for lack of a better term, unfair labor practices as opposed to something more traditional? Is it just reflex? You know, if people decide on these types of jobs, this is the more, yeah, I don't know where to, uh, where to attack it, but is there something something more to it? And that's why obviously fair work uh, as a research makes sense because there seems to be common denominators across all these fields. Yeah, that's a great question, but also a big question, no? So the, the question is, where, where do we begin? Um, mm -hmm. Why did this kind of work become prevalent? And also, mm -hmm. why does it persist? Why does it continually attract people? And why is the government promoting it? <laughs> so promoting it, okay. That it's actually promoting it um if you look at uh, uh promotions about digital jobs ph or rural okay. impact sourcing right so there's there's promotion on online freelance work but we we need to put in the context that online freelance work or platform mediated labor is brought in umbrella right so um these are kinds of work that one can get via the platform and you can have AI training, you can have data labeling, you can have digital marketing, you can even become a secretary or a, a virtual assistant. The and the, yeah, and the research of the International Labor Organization and even Payoneer is that the Philippines is one of the largest suppliers in cloud work platforms. So Globally, yeah. um, all, uh, yung, yung most recent ng Payoneer. So that's uh, the ILO study says um, one of the largest suppliers is the Philippines along with Bangladesh, India, Ukraine, and Pakistan. But Philippines is large, no? As, as labor supply. And importantly, um, yung mean ng rate, so malaki yung supply na nanggagaling sa Pilipinas along with Bangladesh and um, India, pero yung mean rates natin ay mababa. Right? So okay. I wish I could show the, that map, no? So, pero yung mean rate niya na mababa in comparison to, for example, malaki din ang nagtatrabaho sa cloud work sa U.S., so Australia, sa Canada, pero yung clients nila also are based in the US or in Canada mm -hmm. and their mean rate is actually high. Okay. So yung yung common denominator denominator nung 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 mga nasa global south countries is that large supplier tayo, the mean rates are very low and most of the clients are actually located overseas. Right? And then, so, isa pa, yung nature ng work ng, ng AI training. So, sabi ko kanina, di ba, yung cloud work, yung nature niya, marami kong different kinds of work na pwedeng makuha dito. And in fact, we've talked to lots and lots of freelancers. Some of them are actually very proud of the work because hmm. this is much better than any alternative that they can get in the Philippines. But this is also because some of them are able to take on work that allows them greater mobility. So siguro digital marketing has some capacity for mobility. Um, virtual assistant, minsan nagiging nahahire na sila ng company. Nagiging Directly. agency sila. They mm -hmm. even get to outsource kapag nakukuha nila yung loyalty ng client, they're actually able to outsource the work sa pamilya nila sa provincia. Right? We found an, a virtual assistant that's able to sustain her entire neighborhood and okay. her entire community in Iligan. Ganun. But AI work is different. Diba? Kasi um, Una, hindi na halos visible yung client mo rito. So really, binabatuhan ka ng work. You have to perform a, a, a particular set of tasks. You just have to complete them. So there's no interface at all with the client. There's no capacity for you to make negotiations. So if you you accept a contract, no? if you accept an initial contract that's within the, the, the bounds of when you initially accepted the task, wala nang openings in for you to make any negotiations. But those arrangements can also be very unfair. And if they, those negotiations, for example, does not give you any uh, parang safeguards to, uh, for example, Protect ginawa right. mo na yung trabaho, oh, ah, ginawa mo na yung trabaho, pwede ka bang hindi bayaran? So some, sometimes those, contra those certain contracts can safeguard freelancers for that. But most contracts for certain kinds of work, like, AI training, they won't go to the extent of protecting workers in that mm. in that regard. Mm. Right? So, makikita nyo, so I don't want to be too specific here, but if you get the chance to go through the FairWorks CloudWork ratings, Scale AI got 
one scale, I think scale and remote tasks got one mm. over ten. Mm. Right. So um, I saw uh, that. I saw that. Um, a... So what's what, what the impression I'm getting is it's not necessarily a platform impact because you're saying there are platform workers in other geographies who are earning decently, no? And even those working here, uh, like the VAs, they can also earn relatively decently. So, so it feels like, and I, I I hesitate to 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 ascribe. It seems like something AI uniquely, uh, unique to AI, or is that not necessarily the case? Are there other types of work, na hindi AI, but are also suffering these these issues? Um. I guess it's it's it may be connected. So I I, I cannot remember the, the exact um paper, but it's also about the skills. No, mm -hmm. it's also about the skills expectations and um uh, what kinds of skills are demanded and what kinds of people are attracted to those kinds of skills skills. So no yung yung first salvo and study namin on cloud work, we found certain freelancers that are very proud and are earning very well kasi nandun sila sa side ng game development. Okay. But they're freelancers. Pretty they high did end. their jobs on the flat platform. Mm. Or designers, for example. Mm. Uh, so, pero kahit naman yung designer, ang laki lang ng spectrum ng rates. Pero yung data annotators, for example, data labelers, mm. um, yeah. encoders. Mm. Also, we, and, and this is something I think I think that the, the, even the ACT, I think, is aware, right? So, we have a broad range of Filipino aspirants or labor aspirants, but they have very, very different kinds of skills. And right. and I think um, I, I don't know. I guess to be to, to be fair, right? So we 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 have been we have been nudging um, in policy wise to go into the direction of training Filipinos or getting, yeah, or okay, ICT-related jobs is fine, but we need to be preparing them for the kinds of work where, that will give them greater negotiating capacity and bargaining capacity um, within the in, the in the context of platforms. Because India, China, you know, our, our neighbors are starting to train their manpower in, into getting those more sophisticated, more high-skilled kinds of work. And we have evidence that certain freelancers are able to, you know, um, um, get the, the the better bargaining side of it when they are performing work of a high, more of, of, of higher skill. So, mm -hmm. kaya lang, totoo din naman. No? And I understand it, totoo din naman. Na if you think about the whole population of the Philippines, mayroon talagang mga kakagat dun sa ganun klaseng trabaho because these are the skills that they are initially prepared to take on. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, yeah. So what I'm detecting now is obviously this is an evolving uh, issue. So it's one thing. Uh, so maybe let's divide since we're talking about labor, labor demand, labor supply. So on the demand side, it seems to be clustering around kind of the nature of work and the skills required for AI jobs, but specifically this, I would say this lower end of the the kind of the supply chain uh, where you're a data supplier, data annotator. But we we might also be saying, let me know if you agree, that on the labor supply side there could be a policy i don't know what it is policy flaw or policy gap that seems to encourage this kind of work which may may be good or bad depending on the, the kind of work uh, we have but then that conflates with the skills availability in the in the supply you know? if we're saying yeah let's force these ict jobs but most people their best skill is clicking on a on a screen you know just to sort of oversimplify it as opposed to writing code those jobs go to wherever, you know, India and China, uh, which are certainly available to us. But in terms of, I guess, relative population, we have more clickers than than coders. And then lastly, is there also a preference for these jobs? Because one of the things that popped up in the, the Washington Post piece was, uh, it's kind of a mixed bag. No? The ones who are after these jobs, maybe because of the relative ease uh, of uh, acceptance, have decided to stop studying already. No, so I'm just gonna get this gimmick, uh, this gig. I'll earn some money, so I don't need to study. Because that's also another kind of a conflated issue now with education. If we are, from a policy standpoint, nudging people towards these ICT jobs without the requisite preparation or education, they all end up clustering on the bottom, <laughs> and that's where mm -hmm. the data annotation thing uh, lurks. No. 
does that uh, capture uh, at least part of the situation? And, and what do you think about that? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I think it's really the broader labor situation in the Philippines. In general, right? right? It passes. Mm -hmm. And this is historical. So um, when we speak about labor outsourcing, so you have an entire historical trajectory of labor outsourcing. Nag, nag export ka ng migrants, di ba? And even amongst our migrant workers, ang laki din ng spectrum or range ng migrants natin in terms of skills, di ba? Um, so talaga hindi siya balance forever. And uh, and uh, I don't know, we have our Department of Education, we have our we have our different departments, but still, you have a particular segment of our population that's that's uh, at the other side of the asymmetry in terms of skill. Mm -hmm. And then you have call centers. So we embraced labor outsourcing in terms of migration. Then we embraced again business process outsourcing in terms of call center work or uh ta, medical transcription, the ba? So, ang laka -laka sa Pilipinas. so it's it's a trend now because we are very good at speaking English, reading English, we can make sense of visuals and match them and, and think in English and be able to automatically match them. So our other compatriots from other parts of the world that do not have that visual language in English, yeah, you you see it and then you have to be able to label it in English. Right? They so struggle with that, right? Your okay. capacity to do that is something that we are we, we can do easily. So kahit sabi natin na simple skill yon, well, it's still a skill that Filipinos can do. Arguably, it's, ex it's a bit of expertise. Technically, right to to be oh, able to still, match. Oh, right? mm -hmm. um, and, and and then uh, you ask the question, and and this is a question we also we also have asked of all the freelancers that we talked to. Ano trabaho mo before? <laughs> all right. So ano kina go mo before this, or what attracted to you 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 to this? And in in fact, some of the freelancers were even call center workers. So napakahirap ng you know napakahirap na napakastressful ng wine kasi telepono. You have to pretend like you're somewhere somewhere over somewhere overseas. You 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 have to um. Um, pretend an accent, but also the kind of stress and mental mental toll that it 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 it, um, it requires of people who do call center work is really also hard. Plus, you got to travel, diba? And mm. no, no, to an no, office. Yeah. Exactly. You have to travel to an office. So they would say, oh, uh, travel pa lang to and fro uh, three hours na nawawala sa oras ko. So I'd rather just take this on and then I'm still earning dollars. And so there's that. So if for a, from a Westerner, for example, that looks at the rate, the earning of a worker, parang ang let niya, pero from a Filipino, in relation to the other alternatives that are realistically available to a worker, and ito yung interesting, rational sila, hindi sila victims, kasi pinili nila yung work in relation to whatever alternatives are available to them. Unfortunately, and this is what's sad, Bakit kasi walang alternative na better, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a fourth dimension actually. The yeah, other job. Yeah, so walang alternatives na better. And the so substitution thing. On. Mm -hmm. And yung mga nag ai ang interesting, most of them see it as a parking lot. Parang, oh, ginagawa ko to, pero maybe later on, I'll find mm -hmm. it. So, okay, okay. But, and this, I hope, I don't know if sila Regine was able to ask this question. We asked this of, of, of some of our freelancers we talked to, what, how do you see this work? And some of them see it as a parking lot. So ngayon lang to, pero hahanap pa ako ng iba. But the other kinds of work, a freelancers think, oh, this is really what I want to do. I really choose to be a freelancer because I really enjoy the flexibility. Pero yung mga ibang ganon, they are like, you know, writing games or they're do they're doing digital marketing. They're earning quite the, a good amount of money. The more interesting money. type of work, basically. Oh, right? and, and, and self-independent. So iba-iba hmm. talaga. So we have to go back and ask the question, Kasi ano pa ba yung, parang pa, how can we create greater options for Filipinos? So that, but while we are upskilling Filipinos so that we can take on more high-skill jobs, also, what's stopping the rest of the Filipinos to take on this job? If there are no, really, there are no other alternatives. Ma, hindi ko alam kung maniniwala ka, pero I've seen, I've talked to more other freelancers that are taking on more, kind of really onerous work. Like yung CAPTCHA, no? May nakausap ako sa Iligan. Ang trabaho niya, CAPTCHA. So nag-enter-enter nag -enter siya ng CAPTCHA for, for, and parang talagang scam yung, yung, yung mga nakukuha nila. But they're, they're all digital kinds of work na nababato. And so ang dami-dami nang nag-flourish na kinds of work. And people are just jumping onto them because they have no other options. Yeah, it's like picking money from a tree, right? You just see it, do it, and 
they don't necessarily care about well maybe that's part of part of the reason is they don't necessarily see it as full time or permanent employment so it's just extra cash or a parking lot as you mentioned uh and and even if it is technically like below minimum wage on the flip side they don't need to go to an office so parang the trade off i don't know if it's a false trade off is there no it's kind of the opposite of uh I don't know if you remember a term called resistance wage in economics where people, despite being paid more than minimum wage, would rather not work because it costs them more money to actually go to work <laughs> or or yeah. like buy clothes. So it is like the converse of that. Na they're willing to take a below minimum wage job because they don't have to endure all these other stress. So technically, it feels like uh, you know, parang, parang the, their valuation of the job is more positive. No? It's an interesting Which phenomenon. connects you to the bigger story of infrastructure, right? Mm, so yeah. why people make certain decisions. Yeah. Okay. Sige. So from there, I'm just wondering, has Fair Work or your own research looked into kind of the nature of the demand as well? Because one thing that always puzzles me with these things, certainly it's a vital task. I mean, knowing how AI works, you need data, right, to power these models. And because of the high demand for AI models, I would imagine the demand for the data is also just as high. But for some reason, that's not translating to, uh, you know, labor evaluation. <laughs> and uh, and sometimes these aberrations can stay for a long time. No? So have you looked into that? Is it something wrong with, what's wrong with that situation? Is it, are people not bidding the right amount? Or like, for example, let's look at this remote tasks. Remote task is a firm that's also owned by scale. And scale is the supplier to the rest of the AI ecosystem. So is it because scale does not have any competitors? Because that's the first thing that also occurred to me. Na parang, okay, if this thing's being abused, then I should just compete with scale, offer better wages, and maybe I get better quality. I don't know how that's working out. No? What's your mm. uh, view on that? Yeah, so I don't know. Absolutely not. So there are many competitors. Um, and in fact, um, I've written something about this. So so there are some platforms that are presenting, aiming, mm -hmm. maybe performing uh, as if they are um, that they are promoting more decent work conditions, okay. even though they are matching um, Filipino workers towards work that's of of an AI nature of an AI training nature um I'm not sure if you you you've bumped into this before but meron no meron ganito and and so meron iba na parang mer uh, in fact hailed pa siya ng uh, uh ILO um for really? doing oh. gender empowerment etc mm. and um, yeah I heard about those companies about, yeah you but... might talk about it so you might want to feature um, um, um the, yeah. the founder there was at least one company focusing on women and another company focusing on uh PWDs or something who, oh, who are, yes. Yeah. But but using yeah. this this type of work as oh, an oh. empowerment strategy. Yeah. yeah. So okay. when I'm putting it aside, um so it means that certain platforms may want to or may aspire to provide better conditions, but it's it's of a voluntary nature. Nothing forces them because of the lack of standards. And this is what I guess fair work is trying to advance. Now for for, for Filipinos, there's but and, and even globally, right? So for, for Filipinos, if you want to take on work, nothing stops you, or even for, even the, the 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 demand, right? So if you are an abusive client, and if certain platforms are allowed to are, are allowing clients that are abusive on their their platforms without any mechanism of re, for redress for workers, or without kicking or booting out these um clients or the or that. These clients, when they are already found out to be not paying workers after having completed tasks, kung walang ganong classing mechanisms, of course, those kinds of abuses will continue, di ba? And so, ang, ang sinasabi natin, ang nangyayari in the context of the absence of standards, is becoming voluntary. So, some platforms might want to kind of fix particular parts of their systems, but others won't. Um, and so, for example, no, the, the, the very basic um, question of do... Do platforms pay or do platforms commit? No, so scale remote tasks, cloud work for uh, uh, Upwork, for example. So, mm. does the platform commit to the idea that when workers have done their work, 
they will have to be paid fully for it and or they can contest uh uh it when clients do, suddenly don't want to pay them so may mechanism for redress claro siya sa kontrata claro siya sa platform may penalty yung client kapag hindi niya ginawa yon right but other platforms don't have that and bakit pwede yon kasi walang standard right? yeah so, and maybe in the case of upwork i'm not defending upwork at all but they're more of a third party platform and supply and demand meets there so in a way it's kind of a so there's some governance and oversight because it's an exchange of labor. Whereas in remote tasks, and correct me if I'm wrong, they're not, it's not, doesn't work like Upwork because they belong to scale AI. So in a way they represent it's a very one-sided uh, relationship here. Uh, so in a way, they can they can be as unfair as they want because exactly. you know they don't really they don't suffer anything if uh, they're unfair no? And this is where you're headed with the policy question, right? Yes, exactly. Yun nga, di ba? Mas direct na nga. Mm -hmm. Mas direct na nga siya. So technically, dapat mas madaling mag-institute ng policies that would mm -hmm. be more 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 pro worker if they wanted to. But nothing compels them. So so yeah. so when they enter the Philippines, for example, or when they start attracting Filipino workers, also nothing tells Filipino workers to not go there. It, it's a it's a it's an open opportunity for 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 people. And so. What what stops people from going there? Yeah. What stops clients from also abusing workers when when they're there's no mechanism to penalize them or stop um, yeah. um them from doing so? Yeah, I'm wondering. Um, of course, I might be oversimplifying. So, uh, usually the way I view it, if if the market doesn't seem to work, then you know government should step in and and fix it. This this seems like that situation because. On the, uh, and it could be because of many things like scale AI is maybe the biggest <laughs> in that domain. So they can muscle their way like any monopoly and dictate rates. Uh, uh, for me, that just begs competition. But on the on the supply side, yeah, you're correct. If workers don't know any better or they have no other options uh, or they're generally ignorant or they don't view it, as uh, as you said, as a as a permanent thing then 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 providers get away with it the one, the other thing i wanted to ask as well was let's say okay we want to we want to move uh the needle and demand better because there are moves let's say in legislation on you know protecting the rights of freelancers right there's that freelancer yes. bill i think and certain other things but obviously they need they need to know where these jobs are and most of these jobs are hidden away you know they're opaque um if we move the needle, in theory, labor gets more expensive, right? And uh, does that mean we lose out? Because I'm also wondering if, is that really the state of the market where these companies can afford to really, in a way, bully labor? Because labor doesn't have any choice. But if, if, if for example, structures were built in the Philippines that, that made it harder to do it that way, do we then lose out? Does that go to India? Or... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know the ex the full extent of where remote tasks is working. I'm sure there are other countries, right? Global South, but right now we're the biggest, apparently, or one of the biggest. So maybe that's also one problem. You know, it's it's a distorted supply demand equation. There's far too many workers, just one scale AI. So you know, the it's it's a it's a buyer it's a buyer driven market, no, not a seller driven market. And they're they're able to dictate rates. Again, I don't know where where we where we are there. And certainly uh awareness is the first step. You know, I'm wondering though if government might have been aware of this for a long time and they're just suddenly surprised. You know, it doesn't it doesn't I don't know if it feels that way. Well I mean where where do you sit in that kind of that spectrum? And what's the easiest in intervention we could do in theory? Yeah, no, it's it's really very difficult. Um, I mean, to be, to be honest, there are efforts um, at the policy side to tackle this. Um, but but the way they think about it, it it, so it sounds to me sometimes some of the some of the bills. It sounds to me sometimes like they're assuming that the companies are located in the Philippines or they yeah, they can correct. they can you know, they they can put chains on these companies. But we're working with uh, with a very global. A kind of a labor context, and this connects to your your the the point of which which the point your point which is very complex, and it's it's very true, right? Um, so so for example, if we 
if you, if you put our feet forward and say, oh, dito lang magtatrabaho mga Pilipino, right? Of course, we'll, we'll, we can lose out on the competition. And, th- and this is why standards need to be, need to be properly set mm-hmm. and, and at, at the level of these platforms operations on how they handle labor, right? So, parang kung walang kumpanya na, parang, parang yung effort for migrant migration. So, yung broader global effort for, for, um, those demanding migrant labor to respect labor. So, matagal yun. Kaya ang tagal-tagal na battle noon, di ba? Na pinaglaban siya globally so that whether Filipino ka, whether Indian ka, whether Bangladeshi ka, your rights will be protected um, um, as a worker. So, kind of, parang generally, if, if, if those kinds of standards, of if those kinds of labor standards will be fought at the level, level of the global space of how platforms operate, platforms like scale, and actually, may meron din namang force yung sa, sa, in the US side, di ba? Na uh, yung mga platforms na nag-operate doon, even if they're hiring mostly workers from the global south, they need to kind of abide by labor conditions. But of course, ano naman ang control natin na i-pressure yung US government, i-pressure yung mga companies like scale remote tasks to, to do that. Mm-hmm. Pero may mga sarili silang mga labor activists na nag, nag-balalobby din for this. Pero kaya, kaya siya sinasabi ng ILO, kailangan global effort siya to... In, to impose and also kind of promote decent labor standards so that even though nag na, na ano kasi niya na dislodge talaga niya yung nature ng work kasi it's it's very um, platform mediated so parang na na dislodge niya yung employer employee relationship na dislodge, sinasabi niya na may, may flexibility naman so marami siyang na dislodge na standards of labor na dati set in place na and even in context na dapat set in place na hindi pa rin siya talaga fully na implement So talagang ma- naging mahirap siya. Pero yun yung struggle, at, I think, at the level of the ILO and the, where Fair Work is also kind of working with. Now let's set standards at the global level such that it doesn't matter kung sino i-employ, i-employ niya. Dapat platforms stick to these standards. So that even as we grow, kasi dadami, dadami pa ng dadami yung kinds of kinds of work that we'll have to do AI in the future, I will guess, right? And the, the dami pa yung kinds of companies like scale or remote tasks. And paano na yun kung wala siya, walang standards no? that, that, that these companies that are sprouting will have to abide by? I'm wondering as well, and, and cer- certainly those points are very important, something worth raising to, I don't know who it is, Dole or whoever. I'm, I'm just trying to compare it, let's say, with BPO's. The, the typical BPO, for example, where, uh, and I, I could be oversimplifying again, but the rationale was cost arbitrage. So let's move our call centers to the Philippines or to Asia. It's cheaper. We get a one is to four uh, savings. Uh, and it's certainly governed. You have authorities like PESA. Obviously, DOL is also there. And it they it actually results in better wages on average in call centers than kind of other entry-level work in general. In fact, that was kind of a major theme back in the 90s, right? In the early 2000s where an electrical engineer would get a better entry-level salary answering a phone than, than going to a semiconductor uh, plant. A different issue altogether. Now, I imagine the intention with data labeling is similar. Let's do it where it's cheaper. But I'm wondering why did it go that that low in a month, no? Because how can if BPOs can certainly justify above minimum wage, decent work, and still have that cost arbitrage for that activity, then we're left with is it the nature of the activity itself? And then another thing that goes uh works uh well for our BPOs right now is what you mentioned early on in our chat. Uh we have a competitive advantage with the English language, uh generally high literacy rate especially when BPOs already accept just high school graduates and we have a lot of those you know, willing to get work. How come that didn't translate with this first offing, no? <laughs> with this data annotation? Mm-hmm. Uh, assuming we have that leverage also, na, ah, yeah, to be a good data annotator, the English comes in naturally as well as an asset for a worker. And yet workers seem to hit hit rock bottom again. No? I, 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 I'm concerned that that was the default starting position as opposed to Later on, parang ngayon kasi in, in the BPO land, wages have also fallen generally as more and more people have joined the supply. Mm-hmm. But it's still relatively decent work uh, compared to many other fields 
And then itong data annotation hits bottom agad. No? Have you uncovered any yeah. insight on that? Uh, ten Is it a tendency? And is it also not limited to the Philippines? I don't know if you've heard also if Bangladesh and whoever else, Sri Lanka, are, are suffering the same way. Yeah. So workers will bite very low rates. And it, it is sometimes a contentious issue even amongst uh, freelance workers. Now, oh, bumababa yung mga rates because some some of some of the our aspirants are, are just taking, taking on are just accepting taking job. very mm -hmm. low rates. So may mga even even amongst freelancers, may coaching yung mga yan na huwag kayong tatanggap ng mababang rates kasi pinupull down niya talaga yung average rates ng, ng mga Pilipino. But again, I go back to the question of standards. So parang kaya nakakapag-offer at kaya may kakayahang mag-offer yung yung mga ganitong klaseng companies ng below the minimum wage. So, minimum wage and ang fair work is working with the minimum wage kasi nagbabary yung minimum wage depende sa country, di ba? So, hindi natin pwedeng ibase yung minimum wage natin sa minimum wage ng US. Pilipinas na nga lang na minimum wage. Ang tanong, naaabot ba? Yung kahit na per hour, di ba? Sabi, 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 of course, sabihin sa amin, paano lang magkakalculate ng minimum wage? Eh, daily ang minimum wage ng Pilipinas. Okay, let's calculate it divided by 8. What's that amount? No? Divided by 8, kung isang oras ka nagtrabaho, kikitain mo ba yun? Ang, mas, ang malala dito sa sitwasyon, sometimes some workers get it, depending on the platform, depending on the company, but many workers also don't get it. And then, there is no um, stopping certain clients from non-payment within agreed terms. Which is so, another you, issue altogether. That's like abuse already, right? Right. Abuse. So the, the, the very basic standard of workers must reach the minimum wage after costs and also at the same time they must be paid in full for the work that they have already completed no? or they have already rendered. Yeah. Kahit saan, no? this is kind of a labor right that is already parang pinaglaban na to for, 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 for decades sa, sa level ng labor code natin at nasa ILO na rin siya. Pero in the context of these kinds of mechanisms, na, na, oh, ano to? na overturn siya. Yeah, ano you, don't, you don't have those protections. I think that side of the equation certainly deserves like, uh, you know, uh, policies. No, I mean, do you have proper labor employment contracts, etc. And that's another question mark as well. Uh, otherwise, you have no enforceability. And then you men mentioned earlier, in case you didn't get what you wanted, there should be an area or there should be an authority to to file a grievance or get a redress mm, from, yeah. you know, like get a mediation at least. Those structures do certainly don't exist. So I feel that that's kind of a clearer gap in terms of what needs to be put in place in, this, in, in the sense of if you're doing these electronic type platform work, I think it's analogous to cyber crime. No, for a long time that was a gap in 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 uh, you know you, you didn't have anyone to complain to before the cyber crime law came out. Yeah. So there was no law in place. So if you and you suffer identity theft or whatever forgery, uh, financial loss, voila, no, you're you're forced to re forced to rely on standard criminal uh, criminal code. Uh, and find analogous, uh, you know, redress, and and then now you have a cybercrime law. So it seems like that it's be this situation is begging something like that, something akin to a cyber work uh, or digital work. I, I think there are some uh, possible structures, but nothing as explicit as you know. How do you complain, uh, or do you have adequate? Ano, ano yung mga iba pang benefits? Do you have adequate leaves? You know, do you have you, do you have uh, the ability to form a union? Those things don't exist. The wage issue, though, I feel is conflated with just a very, very distorted supply-demand scenario where if if scale is the only game in town, uh, then talagang they can dictate. But I'm wondering, though, what prevents the market from adjusting? No, Maybe the maybe private sector needs to figure it out and, and find a better deal. And that's why it's also good to look at it globally. No? Okay, what are the other countries figuring out? Um, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so meron kang mga, meron kang mga competitors, like for example, Connected Women, mm -hmm. they're promising to be to, to give, for example, um, greater attention to the needs of women. They're uh, promising to work with clients that are more humane and that would, would respect the working conditions that are that women um value. Especially wives or uh, 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 or mothers, Mother. for example, might require, right? So it's 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 a it's, it's a good effort, right? Pero hindi, I don't think they have the capacity of 
uh, of the scale of clients that scale mm-hmm. has kaya nga yeah. siya scale diba yeah, and and scale so, is so a player you, Basically, in oh. the in the in the Silicon Valley ecosystem, I don't know if connected women is actually there. No, so, parang parang you can cut up the supply chain into three parts. No, there's the the actual demand for data, and then you have these platforms, and then you have the worker. Parang the actual demand for data is still missing. Connected women represents perhaps the worker and the platform, but then they need to bid to the, whoever. Mm. No, yeah. I don't They're... know enough. Baka I'm wrong there. Mm. They're reaching. Uh, they are starting to reach um, a lot of Asian companies and even the some big Philippine companies. Pero hindi pa rin siya uh, ganon ka comparable with the kinds of companies that uh, you know. Um, that scale that scale, scale mm-hmm. is able to. So that feels like a very you know j- hopefully just a matter of time because certainly there's a wide space and right now everyone's exposed to the abusive version <laughs> which is remote tasks. <laughs> So if let's say connected women, if there were only two employers, and connected women and and remote tasks, in theory, connected women should not have a problem generating demand because then you can attract more of these workers, presumably, you know, unless there's some other market inefficiency that that it runs into. And actually, thanks for that. No, now I want to talk to uh, the the founders of connected. I ran into them in an in, in an mm-hmm. event. No, so I also met. Uh, I don't know if you know Orkvate. So they're they're they deal naman with um neurodivergent uh uh parang workers no and they're oh, able wow. to give them what's the name Sorry. Ork, I can I can send it to you uh, after our chat no uh they approached me naman l- looking to solicit me as a client and I said unfortunately I don't have uh data demands that uh that are appropriate for your operation but I'll keep you in mind no and uh so so there are substrata no to that to that to that sector but it feels like we're dominated now by this big player who's just muscling its way through the through the market. Okay. Um what about the education, you know, situation? A- a- any comments there because I represent um the Analytics Association of the Philippines as well, no? And one of our main thrusts is to educate everyone in kind of this new fourth industrial revolution thing, but we were certainly looking at kind of higher, more higher end jobs relative to this, no? data analysts, data engineers. So we certainly need more of those. But now that this thing's been unearthed, I kind of have a, I'm kind of, I'm kind of wondering, baka the demand pala really is there, no? Because data analysts are plenty everywhere else, especially in the US. So maybe they don't need those jobs. And the BPOs are already supplying sort of kind of the mid-tier bracket also they're doing uh medical transcription they're doing tech support they're even doing content moderation which is another con- uh, mm-hmm. controversial uh job uh because of the mental health implications yeah but i think they're paid decently for that no parang hazard paying ay labas no they're they're paid above average uh or i don't know i'm assuming they're paid above average because of that stress and that's i think the the, the economics seems to work well for that job but this this data annotation thing doesn't seem to trigger that ano parang supply demand ano equation. So any thoughts on that? Is just is it just an evolution or is it just a matter of time? Like if more connected women and other firms pick up, then the situation of the workers will improve. I don't know. Maybe wishful thinking. Yeah, but well, we 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 hope right. We hope that if more local. So when you speak about education, of mm-hmm. course education hits the preparation of your workers, but education also can speak to your future entrepreneurs, your future talk tech entrepreneurs, right? What kinds of platforms they will be building in the future? Will these platforms that they will be building be more, uh, you know, at least pro worker or promote some decent working conditions? So, pwede natin kausapan yung both sides na yun in the context of education, pero to be honest, hindi ko alam kung gana tayo nando doon in the context of this conversation. So, yeah. first, how do we kind of leap and, and upskill or uh, yung graduates natin so, such that mag-iisip mismo sila parang eto ba eto ba lang parking lot ko lang to fine pero hindi ka talaga mapapaho doon sa parking lot na yun kasi yun yung isang nakikita rin namin sa ibang worker kahit na nakikita nila ng parking lot lang to pero pag tinanong namin kano katagal mo na ginagawa yan medyo matagal na rin so parang so if it's effectively hindi, a job without calling it a job parang ganun right so um even though they had not intended to do this for a long period of time they they kind of were forced to continually do it anyway mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so that part of it, upskilling, but that, and also the other side of it, uh, 
let's talk about this in the context of our our com, I don't know, com, uh, our our engineers, our computer scientists, etc., and talk about humane humane um, working um, conditions, automated decision making oh. systems that, that that they will be creating in the future. Yeah, there's so many. Um... I would say analogous verticals. I just remembered I met a company, also a BPO, and the job of their workers was to flag um, CCTV cameras. So you have these fleets of CCTV cameras all over the United States. They're unmanned. That The feed is sent to Manila. And people just spend the entire day looking at a screen. And obviously there's some, you know, there's some pre-filtering and AI happening there already so if a cctv camera detects some weird unexpected movement that snapshot is sent directly to manila and the worker just makes a split second decision fishy or not fishy or you know is this legit or not legit that kind of thing uh and and that's the entire offering you know you have an outsourced security monitoring team which I guess on balance is cheaper than maintaining an on-site security team. So the only time someone like a security officer is needed on-site is when Manila office says that's suspicious and within a split second, the person goes in to investigate. So I found that a pretty elegant operation. Seems like the workers were, you know, were being treated well uh, and they're expanding. So I, So anyway, the point I'm trying to make is it doesn't take a lot to professionalize this mm. work which unfortunately is not the case right now no but it it is possible that what was my first re, one of my first reflex when i read the article and realized the extent that this could be professionalized by the bpo sector uh and someone can make an argument for it assuming the economics still works out no for you know mm -hmm. whoever scales clients are so i'm hopeful that that could be an outcome but okay let's jump back to policy um any thoughts and ideas on how this could translate to better policy? Like, because uh, I think we have had examples of this. Like, for example, the the whole debate with the Uber drivers, right? And uh, and uh, and Grab, that used to be completely unregulated as well, and mm. that was also platform based in a way that was also AI based. And yes. the, and I, I let me know if I got it right. Parang for the longest time, it was still Uber at that time they even didn't see the driver as an employee. They saw the driver as a customer. You know? It's like platform economy. Parang as lang. a user. Oh, mm. diba? So yeah, you could argue that. And then they had an algorithm that prices rides dynamically. That was cool. But that just, if you try to parang jury rig and force that back into the, the existing legal paradigm, you've just violated labor law. <laughs> you've just violated LTFRB pricing and all that. And that's where it eventually got got mired in, you know, uh, you know, in a way, in effect, you were providing a an unregulated taxi service, irrespective of. Uh, I like I was an Uber user. I loved Uber because of the convenience. But you know, they got mired in that too. So, do you see something like that or something analogous to that happening to this data annotation thing? Or what would you want to see from a policy standpoint? Yeah. So. If we look at the fair work um, um, scheme, right, you can see that certain certain platforms that also do automated decision making systems and match labor and um, labor demand and supply, mm. um, some of them are able to promote better working conditions. And you ask the question, so puede, right? Yeah, it's so possible. puede. Yeah. yeah, it's possible to do it. And uh, um, but there's nothing that forces them to do it, and and this is where you know po po policy should come in. So mm -hmm. we we need to think about it both at the level of the platforms, but also at the level of labor, labor, um, of supply. You know, in the Philippine side, because this is also the side that we can control further. Mm -hmm. Geographically tethered platforms. Um, we have a lot of platforms that are also homegrown, na, di ba? Yung dito nagsimula, no, uh, incubated in the Philippines, mas maliliit sila than your Grab or your Food Panda. Pero, nonetheless, they're also not necessarily um, 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 re respecting or promoting pro work or conditions, di ba? So, bakit hindi? Kasi wala din naman tayong standards even for, for the companies that are setting them, setting them up from, from here. So, ang sinasabi ko, um, 
may global platforms ka and you can say oh it's harder to control global platforms but even your global platforms are also are not, not complying yeah yeah exactly you're, you're in, and you're not necessarily also uh, um giving them any specific right. directions so we really need we really need to address this um napaka murky and mahabang discussion yung yung discussions ng ng employer employee relationship um we of course our, our last report of fair work in geographically tethered work in sagrab ang kas food panda etc we have a very specific set of policy recommendations there that include both interim kasi ang tagal-tagal na mabago yung batas natin di ba and ang tagal-tagal yung kung kung long pag-uusapan natin ang tagal-tagal bago ma-consider sila as actual employees pero in the interim we also need to set certain kinds of standards that are doable even outside of actually changing the laws so ano yon and and we we need to start working on those and one of those more feasible is very simple yung part ng uh, um nudging platforms to respect at least no kahit na yung fair pay and fair conditions sa, sa, of course lahat pero yung 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 part na natapos na yung trabaho and they will not be paid for the work that's already uh, yeah, that's, been that's criminal of course it's criminal we, right and, and you, that's, you stole, that's very... you stole something from the worker obviously right? yeah, it's very it's very basic and yet platforms cannot commit to it why so um uh, so we can fight and we can go for yung parang unti unte graduated lobbies or graduated appeals which which is which is um kind of the basic that we can demand from companies if a worker has already performed the work you should pay the worker then mm-hmm. you can go for what we have already fought for minimum wage like it's go for minimum wage and so pwede natin siya unti unti and we th- we th- we think um but i mean this is because of this is of course our wishful thinking but we don't think it's impossible for platforms to demand this of clients that you have to pay mm. workers that have already registered so other, otherwise they just have to be strict and kick out work clients that will not be willing to to to, to, to pay i guess and again I'm, i might be oversimplifying again one missing structure as well is there's really no visibility or transparency as far as kind of this kind of work a priori. No? Unlike if you're yare, you're a company, you're registered here, you apply for DTI, you apply, all these permits, there is a structure by which the government can actually see that you exist. Since this is a direct uh, kind of work to some unnameable platform in some unnameable country, there's no... Unless we register the workers themselves. And that also is another issue. Like uh, some people don't want to be registered uh, for all, you know uh, many reasons, taxation, etc. No, um, we're not even working about worrying about tax because at these rates you're already below minimum wage. You, even, you shouldn't even be worried about paying taxes. <laughs> but it's more about getting visibility so that you can be protected by the government. Because if the government can't regulate what it can't see or it can't uh, affect. Well, yeah, anyway, so I just want. Like, well, we're at the hour, so but I'm happy to keep okay. talking, no? Okay. Um, mm. what's your reaction to that point? No? How do you how do we get that structure in place? No? So, something that we should ask, and maybe you could ask this of people you'll interview in the future. Mm. Is that we promote ICT ICT related jobs. This is active promotion. We even sometimes train government. and go go across the country to 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 attract Filipinos to take on these kinds of work. Mm. Um, but who? is responsible for looking at the conditions of work mm. and who is responsible for monitoring the numbers the res- who, 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 how many workers are taking on these jobs what kinds of jobs are they doing what kinds of skills do they have are they upskilling are they getting better at the jo- kinds of jobs that they're getting no one exactly is doing that so mm. parang you have a promotion side but the the other side of looking at the conditions and but how, how do you kind of upskill workers if you don't even have the numbers and so we really have to start at that so that's my response quick response to you yeah, we yeah. need to balance promotion with a a a cognizance of what kind of work are our workers it's emerging actually, actually i don't know if you've ever if you've already started doing this i want because of this i want to start doing an inventory of these jobs that have just appeared purely because Let's just call them the fourth industrial revolution jobs, but the weird ones, no, you know, like content moderation. Obviously, people know that uh, drivers, but then you have weird things like click farms, 
influencer farms. Meron pa isa, uh, the strangest that I've seen lately, uh-huh. um, yung nagsusupport sa smart care. So, yung interface na makukita nung nagbibigay ng care is a robot or a doll, tapos Filipino yung voice yung sa likod. Or like, kasalita. But, but there's a rule that the face could not be seen. So, I've uh, seen this in okay. a recent conference. That is amazing. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> So Smart we need labor, to, yeah, we need question. to inventory this, and I'm I'm also I'm I have a personal uh, you know stake here because I'm promoting artificial intelligence, but what's happening here is a moral hazard I think because if if by using AI you actually encourage more bad labor I mean to put it bluntly, it's the same argument for the climate problem no in AI because the more you use AI the more you need these high performance chips the more power you suck from the system same banana with blockchain they use the same uh, technology then it doesn't seem like there's any way out you know as more demand for this uh kind of technology increases you aggravate the labor condition and i'm worried you know, suddenly because that is the i define the dystopia and the utopia as or oh, dystopia everyone loses a job ai takes over and the utopia is no people keep jobs ai augments you but then there's a third ano pa pala, mm-hmm. dystopia where you create weird jobs no or jobs that are bad for 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 people and and the problem with ai is it can really accelerate demand beyond you know totally different scale exponential scale shot. so now we have an exponential growth in bad jobs that is amazingly unexpected <laughs> and uh <laughs> I, I was talking to Ben Tihang, you know, also from the LSU in another mm. chat, no? And he, cho- he showed me a really worrisome chart where between the years of 2012 to 20, no, no, 20 to 2010 to 2016, we've had an unprecedented growth in productivity, which mirrored our GDP. But our labor was flat. Our unemployment was flat. Our wages were down. So sabi ko, where is the balancing figure? You know, if if labor and and unemployment and wages have not picked up, then that must have gone to the capitalist, no? Because the productivity, because <laughs> the baganan lang naman yung equation, eh. And of course, he couldn't really necessarily say which, obviously, but it is a weird thing. And then that doesn't even include the AI, you know, productivity later. Pa, 2016 is a bit early. So now you have this exponential trend, productivity spikes. But then labor conditions don't. And I'm talking too much now, but I think I thought freelancing was part of the solution where you commoditize jobs but give power to the you know to the freelancer. Unlike I see you have an interesting structure then under you know structured employment, which can also be just as oppressive and onerous, except you sign stupid contracts mm. because yeah, you can't get out of it. But a freelancer is purely output driven. So okay, sana yun. You know, I, I I loved freelancing work, and then the freelancing bill just you know makes that even sweeter. Okay, now you can claim benefits, you can mm. take your employer to task if they don't pay you. May mga ganun protections na, and then this thing pops up, this data annotation thing. So sabi ko, okay, that's kind of a mongrel, no? It's a bad labor freelancing situation with no redress. It's amazing. Okay, so uh, of course we can t- talk endlessly about this, but. Maybe you have to save some for the next chat, no? Um, any takeaways at this point, given this Washington Post story and kind of your research in in general, and maybe some pointers for people who may wanna help or or get in touch with you to to augment your your work. Uh, I mean, broadly speaking, now, no, not just related to this, like broadly speaking on platform and freelancing, digital freelancing. Yeah, I th- I think oh, I-, I won't repeat now what I said, um, and also with anyone's interested, please feel free to go to um, Fair Work's website. Also, the study of Fair Work Philippines is there. But for anyone who wants to catch um, some of the past research that we've done on cloud work and the conditions of workers here, you, you can, can reach out to me. But I guess my quick response is that we yeah, really all, always need to ask the question of development for whom, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, this is this connects to your point earlier. It's that we... Even even myself, I'm, I've I've been studying ICT and development for the longest period of time, and we, te- what twenty years ago we were thinking that ICT will really facilitate a lot of progress and a lot of development, but then you go back to the question of 
Teka muna, development for whom? So, sino yung umuunlad? Sino yung nagiging ma-better ang buhay? Um, and totoo naman na better yung buhay. You know? and, but boy, we get more choices, we get more opportunities. But also at the same time, certain segments of the population also become much worse off. Even peg to precarious conditions. I mean, we have we have to ask that question, why and how? But not just why, what could we do? Because as we talked about it, but it's a very holistic problem that many different sectors of the economy will need to come forward and, and to think and find solutions for it. Yeah, and uh, maybe one more one more point I want to raise is w- one of the earliest things you mentioned is cloud work exists everywhere in the world, but for some reason the cloud work we get is the bad one or the the abusive one, whereas cloud work in the U.S., cloud work in Australia, they're paid better. No, so. For 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 some reason, instead of a a the more democratized labor structure or democratized work opportunity, we might actually be seeing a structure that reinforces existing, mm. you know, biases, structures, discrimination. So it's another global north, global south thing. Instead of <laughs> yes. instead of blurring the lines, no, nakakainis, diba? Uh-huh. And I guess you will recall from the past, right, where we are the producers of raw materials for cars, for chips, etc. Right? So, parang ganun din siya. It kind of kind of reinforces itself. How do we get out of that cycle? Yeah, it's in on a more macro parang perspective, we're selling our labor for a song to build these goods, but we're paying first world prices for those goods when it's already put together, no? That's really weird, no? And that becomes very extractive. Lalabas, it's really extractive because on the demand, we're paying high prices, but on the supply, we're pay- we're getting the vast, the low end. So, what's the difference? All right. So, Prof, uh, I really appreciate the time you've given to talk more about this issue. We've obviously not scratched enough of the surface to cover, but hopefully this was helpful to the people viewing uh, this is being aired back to back with uh, my conversation with Regine, so it's kind of going to be a kind of a two, you know, uh, a two part feature. Uh, she'll talk about her story, and then you'll t- your. We've just talked about the more macro perspective. Uh, I hope to be able to talk to you again, you know, to to unearth more more of this insight. But you know, otherwise, thank you very much for your time, and yeah, hope to see you again on another conversation. Thanks so much. I enjoyed talking to you. Bye.